Welcome back to White Mountains Today. I'm Chelsea Kupalowski. Have you ever wondered what goes on in the woods in the winter here in New Hampshire? Well, here to talk about it is Valley Naturalist Claire Long. Thank you so much for coming today. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah. and it's a great morning to be out in the woods in the winter this it, morning. I'm sure it yeah. is, but I'll learn a lot more. I'm I sure. I'm sure. <laughs> but the best way we're going to do about this is to see what you know about oh. the winter and how we're going to do this. So I know, thinking, mm. hearkening back to your school days when, you know, you sat in the back row like me. We sat in the back row so we didn't <laughs> have to answer questions. So, but I'm going to yes. ask you some questions. And you're going to give me your best answer, which I'm sure is going to be fabulous. And then oh, yeah. I'll give you I'll give you why it's right, or why it <laughs> or why, not. Why, yeah. why why it's not completely right. And then we'll give you a little more information. So, I'm really excited. You know, yeah. I'm curious what I know and what I don't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> gonna find it, some it out. All right, we'll start with the first question. <laughs> so name three animals. Name three ways animals deal with the winter. Now winter is cold. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of food. It's snowy. There's it's there there's dark a lot of time. There's a lot of wind. Okay. Okay. So animals what would you if you were an animal, which way how would you deal with snow and cold and wind and something uh, happens to their coats, right? Okay. 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 That's something, right? Okay. Okay, very good. Very <laughs> what? good. But see, 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 we're see doing this. this? Okay. They probably would save up food. Okay. Like we okay. do in a blizzard. Okay. okay. So Ish. think bigger. Think bigger. Okay. Okay. But that's still great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because so what you're thinking about or you're thinking about adaptations for animals that called they tough it out. Mm -hmm. So they stay here. Yes. Yes. So those are some of those adaptations for those animals that stay here. So that's one way animals oh. deal with winter. And then some migrate. Yeah. See. See. Okay. That's two. And what's the third? Oh, whoops. <laughs> you know, no, no, no whoops. You got it. I you mean, got it. they so hibernate. The yes. So they hibernate, they migrate, or they tough it out. Nice. Yeah, good okay. for you. So good, good on you. So you knew that. So a lot of the, the hibernator animals are the ones that people are really kind of confused about okay, because yeah. they mm -hmm. think that all animals hibernate in the winter because they don't see them anymore. Well, in reality, mm -hmm. there are lots of animals that are underneath the snowpack. That's called the subnivian layer. Nivian is means snow mm -hmm. in some language. And, <laughs> and you go under the snow, and so there's lots of activity under the snow there. Mm -hmm. Some of our, what's our most famous um, migrator? What's the birds. one? Birds. Yeah, birds. Yes, we get a lot of, a lot of the birds. Mm -hmm. And actually, there are some birds that migrate into where we are here. Oh, really? Because of the food source. There's plenty yes. of things. Mm -hmm. the, the big thing with animals in winter here is they need to get food. Mm -hmm. Water's important, but food is much more important. If you can eat, then, then you can keep yourself active, your metabolism, you can keep yourself warm, mm -hmm. you can do what you need to do. So eating is a, is a big part for the migrators. And then mm -hmm. for those who stay here or tough it out, it's called, like you said, mm -hmm. some of them have camouflage. So like the mm. snowshoe hare, instead of being brown, it's still moving around, it's still eating, but it, it changes its coat, it's pelagic, and it turns white. And, or it goes white, actually. What it does is it replaces the brown hair with these hollow hairs and that actually look like they're white. And then they camouflage themselves. So, so you're right. Hide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or putting on extra fur and things. So see, mm -hmm. you knew that. You're good, good. girl. Oh my gosh, you're good. <laughs> okay. I, I feel like you twisted a little bit, so it sounded like I knew it. <laughs> but All thank right, you. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, true or false? Okay. Some frogs can freeze solid. I mean, I lived in Florida and I know those iguanas that freeze don't make it, so. If it's a frog, it's not oh, a frog. Iguana, okay, let's go with false. Oh, wait, Almost no, no, true, right. true. There we true, go. True. <laughs> no, sorry, they can freeze solid and make it. Yes, yeah. good for you, good for you. Yes, actually they can. Yeah. And it's something wow. that we have in our cars that the frogs actually generate into their system to keep them so they don't so they oh. don't die from this. It's kind of like an antifreeze. Wow. But we'll talk about more antifreeze later when you get the next one of these other questions right. <laughs> um, <laughs> that will happen. <laughs> but what frogs can do, like wood frogs, mostly the terrestrial frogs, mm -hmm. the, the ones in the ponds, you know, like the bullfrogs or the green frogs, they go down into the mud and will oh. breathe through their skin. So there's, mu there's oxygen in the, in the mud and they'll just lower their temperature, to lower their body uh, metabolism, mm -hmm. and just breathe through their skin. Where the terrestrial frogs, like the wood frogs or the peepers, what they do is they will, in the, in the fall, 
and that's why I'm such a big advocate, don't rake your leaves, because underneath the mm. leaves, the frogs and insects and things will crawl under there and get ready to spend the winter under underneath oh, wow. your stuff on your lawn. Um, mm -hmm. So they will go down underneath there and then they'll lower their body temperature. And then there's a couple of other chemical things because when mm -hmm. things freeze, they expand and they crack and they, they put a couple of other things other than antifreeze into their cells to stop mm -hmm. this cracking. And they can freeze solid. So you could go find a wood frog and bring it inside mm -hmm. your house in the winter. It, it doesn't, you know, they kind of crunch anything. up so yeah. you can't really tell it's a frog. You're going to be like, are you a frog? <laughs> <laughs> and you can pick it up and take it into your house and um, thaw it, and it will go out. And then you wow. can actually put it back in to the freezer, and it will it'll freeze. Solid. Freeze again. So it can do that. It has this ability. That the peepers and the wood frogs in this area are the ones that wind up doing that. Wow. I mean, that's fascinating. I never thought about what frogs did all winter. I know. <laughs> They did something. They came yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're around. They show up. <laughs> they show up again. In the spring. Where did you go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. Yep. That so is the really ones neat. In the ones in the water go into the mud and the ones on mm -hmm. the land um, freeze solid. Or the uh -huh. ones that the ones that here freeze mm -hmm. solid that we have here. Or can freeze. Some of them don't freeze solid, but some of them can freeze. That's why it's so important to have a good snow layer. Mm -hmm. because the snow layer acts like an insulator. So even though you wouldn't think 32 is a really warm degree, it is for these animals because they're adapted to it. Their, their bodies, their metabolism changes to, to oh. adapt to this lower degrees there. Oh, wow. Two right so far. We're doing Ish. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we may as well follow up. What do conifer trees in your car engine have in common? Antifreeze. Yeah, there we go. See, you knew. <laughs> So that wonderful balsam fur smell that you mm -hmm. smell when you're walking out in the woods, that's actually the tree's antifreeze wow, because it has crazy. these needles. So, mm -hmm. you know, leaves, the, um, the hardwood trees, like in a maple or a birch or something, they drop those leaves. Mm -hmm. But the, the conifer trees keep those needles, which are basically their leaves. That's how they make their food. They, they photosynthesize through those needles. Mm -hmm. And when, when water freezes, it expands. You know, that's why if you put you know, a can of something in the freezer and it, it'll, yeah, it blows up. Yeah, that same <laughs> thing's happened to your cells. <laughs> and yeah, the yeah. cells in, in, in your cells, in any, any cell, it'll expand. So what the trees needle, the, the conifers don't want that to, that to happen because then it'll break the needle mm -hmm. and then they won't be able to photosynthesize and when eventually when it starts to warm up again. So they put in this, it's called ethylene glycol and part of it oh. is that balsamy furry smell, that wonderful smell you smell is actually an antifreeze, it's a natural antifreeze. Mm -hmm. You know, our antifreezes don't smell that good. No, but not no. so much. <laughs> our car antifreeze, nah, I don't want to smell that, but <laughs> the balsam fur is really great and it puts it, it puts it right into that needle. So you'll smell it in the fall and then you smell it in the spring. But a lot of people aren't tromping around in the schlop in the spring. No, no. So they don't, they don't hear it as much. <laughs> mud season, eh, not so much. We'll yeah, just yeah. stay inside and watch outside TV. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but we'll, um, the, and so you'll start seeing it. So winter mm -hmm. in the woods, everything starts planting in basically the August. But even um, August to, yeah, starting around August, September, the woods start preparing for the winter. So it's not just, boom, here we are in winter. Let's drop those leaves and things. It all it it's happens a whole very slow, slowly. Right. Stage process. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Interesting. Yeah, it's neat. You don't think it. You don't. No, think, you no, just think it's not. just like, whoa, how did that happen? It's like it's a slow, eventual process. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that are actually allergic to the woods, turn, uh, preparing for winter. Oh, they actually get you like know allergies. allergies. Yes, a lot of people claim that Seasonal on allergies. goldenrod. Yes, mm -hmm. they claim goldenrod, and you know goldenrod may may affect some people, but it could also be these trees mm -hmm. giving chemically talking to each other, and that's a whole other thing. There are a lot of people. Well, it's interesting. We talked a couple of things about how processes in the winter, mm -hmm. but it, it's like they have to go through all the different temperatures. You have to hit, you have to have the layer of snow. It's like all this stuff has to happen for us to get back to the spring and summer. Right, right, so. right. And it, and it all, and it's a dance that works mm -hmm. beautifully in through through each season, and it all works in there. It all blends. It all connects. It all has a reason. There's a reason for a reason for the season. You know, whatever. <laughs> I love that. Isn't that? Great? I love saying it's a dance. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It makes yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fun. Okay, next question. Um, how do water birds keep their feet? from freezing in the winter. Ooh, shoes. 
Shoes. Lots of shoes. <laughs> Big shoes. Lots of padding. <laughs> Socks? No. Um, I don't know. So Do this, they one, this is a hard one. Keep them moving? Are they. So moving, you're on the right track. Okay. Moving, yes, moving. Okay, so. We have circulation. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, the blood goes down to the ends of our fingers and our toes and comes back up through the heart. So we have our veins and our arteries. Mm -hmm. And it takes the oxygen out to it to keep the things moving and alive and then brings it back up through. The veins bring it back up, the arteries send it out, mm -hmm. and it comes through. Blood coming out of your heart, out of your arteries, is warm. The blood coming back through your veins is cold. So. Yes. When that's why we we try we have to keep our extremities very very warm during the winter when we go out there, mm -hmm. um, because the stuff is cold by the time mm -hmm. it really gets out there. It, there's really not a lot of heat to it coming back. What the birds will do is they have something called counter current exchange. So mm. it's like taking the warm pipe. So we, we look at the arteries and veins as pipes. So you take the warm pipe, and you put it near the cold pipe. So the warm pipe mm. cools down, but the cold pipe warms up. Ah. So the blood, so it never gets really, really cold. So their feet are always circulating some kind of, it's colder than mm -hmm. normal, but it's not cold enough for it to impact its ability to move. Wow, and that's just how their bodies are set up. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. Right, right. So on the cold fall mornings or cold spring mornings or something, same type of thing, it's the arteries. And what happens in the winter is their bodies, you know, it, the, the things start to uh, contract a little. So the veins do come closer. Yeah, so, like you know, up. you did really well. Thank you. You, know, you too <laughs> could be a valley nice. naturalist. <laughs> Might need a little more schooling there, but <laughs> thank you. No, I feel like I learned so much. It's so fun. All these things I didn't know, things you think you know, or yeah. you assume, it's, no. Yeah, and it's so neat. And now when you go outside, you're going to be thinking about, okay, what's, what's, what's here? And how are they yeah. toughing it out? Or who migrated? Yeah. Where are the frogs? Yeah, where <laughs> are the frogs? <laughs> They didn't migrate. <laughs> <laughs> well, they migrated into the mud, but you know. Yes, whatever. that's fair. That's, that's fair. fair. You can that's use that word a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is so much fun. I'm oh, so great. glad Thank I learned you. so much. Thanks course, for having me now here, I can Chelsea. Impress my friends. <laughs> yes. I mean, your next cocktail party is going to be fabulous. It's going to be great. It's be themed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, for having me here. <laughs> and you're watching White Mountains today. <laughs>